Hi everyone and welcome replay viewers. I'm so glad you're here and I invite you to share your name and where you're from in the comments so I can say hi to you later if you're watching the replay. And I am here this week sharing with you five dating strategies that lead to love no matter what's happening in the world. These I consider the sort of core commitments that you're making with yourself that actually do kind of change your consciousness, your frequency, and actually open up to allow yourself to receive something amazing, what I like to call unicorn love, which is the kind of love you never thought could exist, but it does. So if you're joining, click in up the link above in the subject to um, make it so that your name shows up if you comment, because I'm totally open to hearing any of your questions, or I'd love to see your comments or who's joining, where you're from. So please share with me if you are here so that I can see um, with this specific tool, it's I, it doesn't show me who you are. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. If you watched yesterday's um, or haven't watched yesterday's, I encourage you to watch yesterday's where we talked about the first thing. And, and that's really, you know, very simply, but not so simply because there's a lot of things that keep us from doing this. The first thing is making that decision. And I find that a lot of people hold back in actually deciding, yes, I truly desire to have a, a love relationship in my life because there's some fear. Fear that it won't happen and then you'll be disappointed. Sometimes people like almost reject themselves even from their own desires. It's like, okay, I really want this. I really want this. But then the inner critics say, oh, well, you can't have it. That's not going to work. Blah, 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 all of that. And then you, then you just kind of separate from it or abandon it and secretly hope that it happens at the same time. And that's when people are people can say stuff like, oh, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If it's going to happen, it'll just happen. And truly, that's not choosing it. That's not actually giving yourself and the universe that clear message that this is something I am having. So that's a summary of the first day. Today, we're going to talk about the second step and it's a step, it's a commitment, it's a pillar. <laughs> um, the second one, which is also probably not that surprising, is about creating the best possible vision of love. And when I say vision, I don't necessarily mean just what you can see. It's really about what is that experience you want to create in a relationship. And that comes from really having your own self-awareness, knowing who you are, knowing what it is that matters to you, being super aware of what you value, and actually living those values. So a lot of people, um, you know, this is something that I do with private clients regularly, which is really look at you know, what they want to create in terms of creating that phenomenal vision of love. And so much of the time, um, we're not aware of what actually are our core values, or we are aware that of them, but we're not actually living them. So how many, um, so oftentimes it'll be something like, well, Someone will say, yeah, I really want someone who's really funny and healthy. And yet, you know, they're actually not truly living into that. And so I find that this this process of 
creating a phenomenal vision or creating that best possible vision is really revealing. And it's one of the things that when you get this, when you really get that alignment with your vision, hey, welcome, please share your name if you're joining because I can't see who it is, it just says Facebook user. Um, so when you really connect to your vision of love, it's really one of those things where, um, you know, you're actually feeling a lot of love, like you're actually living your life in love. And um, I call that like how you lo love your life is your love life. That's one of the things that I find most powerful. And the other thing is playing into love, you know. That's the name of one of my groups, Big Happy Love, The Playful Path to Love, because, you know, when you're really aligned with those things that light you up and excite you and you really are choosing those things for yourself, that really creates, you know, a higher vibration, a higher energy that is magnetic, that is, you know, very love attracting. And so let's talk about a couple of the things that you want to know, like when you're creating your best ever vision of love. So this is the second of the dating strategies is creating that best ever vision. When you're creating that, you really want to recognize all of the things that keep you from that. So there's several different things that you can do to do sort of a quality check. You know, we just talked about, do you know your values? Do you know what you truly value and what that looks like in relationship? Like if you're the kind of person that, you know, really does value health and, you know, you, you take care of your body, you exercise, you really, you know, focus on whole foods or whatever it is. You have to know what that looks like because you can't just say, okay, I really know that I desire someone who's healthy. You have to know exactly what that picture is for you in terms of how you do that, how you live it, how um, you, you, what, the, what that is in your life. So are you the person that gets up and makes a green smoothie out of kale from your garden and nuts and, you know, parsley or something? Or are you a person who, you know, likes to add lettuce to your cheeseburger? Like, what is your sort of level of healthy? How does that look? And, you know, being able to be really kind of clear. Um, I've seen people, I was just about to talk about this, I think I cut myself off earlier, you know, people will say, oh yeah, I want someone who's really funny, yet they're kind of like, all the time, like they're really not having a sense of humor with themselves. So, you know, I find that, you know, really looking at the values can be a real wake up call. The other thing is, um, you know, in creating your best possible vision of love, it's really important to check in to where, and this can be challenging to do on your own, I will be honest about that, like, you know, how much of your vision is actually coming through fear. So when your vision is being created from a place of fear or scarcity, then what it will look like is um, where you're kind of depriving, you're holding back things that you truly desire because you're afraid that someone is going to judge that or not like that or reject you because of that. So what are those things that you're afraid to say or, or what are those things that you're saying that aren't actually true for you that you think are the things that are going to be attractive. I used to, you know, think that I was way sportier, sportier than I am. Like talking about, you know, 
going for hikes or going skiing. And when it really came down to it, I don't really like hiking. I don't really, I don't ski. I skied when I was, I mean, I know how to ski. Do I want to ski? Do I want to be in a relationship where we're skiing? Actually, no, I don't. But there was a part of me that, you know, was so convinced and I didn't even realize I was doing it. I was so convinced that because I live in Colorado, that I really would probably not have anyone choose me if I wasn't a skier. There was a part of me that had that belief. And I, I didn't even realize that it was there um, until, you know, I really took time to be with myself and get really honest with myself. And it could only come from that place of honesty and that place of being able to um, be uh, celebrating my difference because I really made myself so wrong and so felt like I, you know, that the things that I was was so un unattractive that I could not you know, be, actually be who I was. I couldn't really ask for the true vision of what I wanted in relationship. So this is, this is a really actually kind of complex space because the way our inner critics work, the way we've been influenced, uh, you know, the way our, um, you know, if it's, if we're not feeling confident and secure in who we are, then it's going to be really easy to um, not share a true vision. And so, okay, so we just talked about the ways that if we're filtering our vision through scarcity and fear, then we may be saying things or, or painting a picture that's not 100% true. There may be a lot of parts that are true, but we can kind of unconsciously, unknowingly not represent ourselves fully. Um, the other ways we do that are, you know, we're, we can spread kind of a wide net. We can, we can be in a vision that feels like, okay, well, if I actually said what I truly desire or shared who I truly am, then, then we feel like, oh, this is such a narrow um, pool of people that would fit that. Like, it's really easy to think that. And instead say, you know, I just really want someone nice. I want someone kind, someone healthy, like, and be in these sort of generalizations that then also just make it a little complicated because the universe, even like with online dating sites or wherever you are communicating yourself or just your own energy is kind of uh, watered down. Like, it's really hard for someone to say, oh, yeah, that's my person. So that part can be um, kind of tricky. Hello. Oh, hi, Victoria. Great. Um, yes, share your name when you join or click the link above that will give you permission for Facebook to show your name, which is really awesome. Um Yay. I'm not doing a tarot reading today, but I am going to set something up soon. So hold on tight. And we do one every um, Sunday at Unicorn Church. So please join us then too. Um, anyway, so that wide net, the not knowing your values, the filtering through fear. The other thing the filtering through fear and scarcity does is it creates an energy of kind of tolerating stuff or an energy of um, depriving yourself. So for me, my examples are so wacky, but my, my feeling was, okay, I had two tiny little chihuahuas and two fluffy Persian cats when I was single. And I thought for sure that there was no male on the planet who would ever date a woman who had such like prissy animals. Like I had these tiny little chihuahuas like, oh God, that is total dude repellent. That's what I would always say. Oh, I have such a dude repellent because I have chihuahuas. Um, so that was an interesting belief that truly probably did keep me single for a while because I truly believed that. So until I got to the place where I was like, you know what? 
I love animals. I just happen to like tiny ones that I can put turtlenecks on. <laughs> that, once I got to that place where I could just be me, fully me, then I realized that those were the kinds of things that were actually attracting some really fun, interesting, smart, cool, funny people. So um, it's, you know, so I was depriving uh, myself of that because I was making all of that wrong. Um, so, you know, if your vision is holding spaces where you're not willing to kind of share something because you think, oh, no one would put up with that or, or no one, you know, would you know, really want someone like that, like, then you're, there's some funky energy with that, too. So, you know, this whole, um, the vision process, I actually do so many different levels of this in my private coaching, my Love Muffin private coaching program, because, you know, not only, you know, are we, you know, if we're coming into this part of it from fear, or insecurity, or scarcity thinking, then, you know, we are, there are some reasons, you know, there, there's self-esteem and, you know, this lack of feeling safe, being able to put yourself out there that does require deeper attention and work. And if you heard me talk a little bit about some of the processes I do Yesterday, you know, really the work that I do in Love Muffin, in my coaching programs, and in all the ways that I coach people in relationships is about getting to that point of where things were created. Because you're not kind of showing up out of fear or, you know, not connected to yourself or don't, or lacking that relationship with yourself. Um, you know, for no reason. I mean, this actually takes consciousness. It takes kind of an intimacy and an honoring of yourself that is different. And it isn't anything we learn. So, you know, Love Muffin and the work that I do as a love coach, this isn't about, oh, you know, here's how to make someone like you. Here's how to get a date. This is about doing that inner work to come back to you, to actually know who you are, and to be in a space where you are so clear and confident in who you are that, you know, you get to be all of you. You get to be the unicorn delight that is you. And that's actually what the world is needing the most. And what I also notice in all of this is that when people do this work, a lot of things happen. They start making more money because they're valuing themselves. They're not afraid to share gifts that they didn't even, oftentimes they, people don't even know their gifts because there's things that they do so effortlessly that they think, well, that's not worth anything because it's so easy for me. But meanwhile, there's people out there who, would love to have that kind of support from you. So, you know, I see people, you know, really coming into themselves, not only finding the love of their life, starting with themselves, but also attracting a person who now can see them because you've been able to see yourself. But then all of these other things that occur new jobs, new, you know, passions, new careers, new ways of being that just bring more joy in general. So it's so, it's so magical. And so these five strategies, I will say, you know, I'm calling them dating strategies, but they're really commitments that you're making with yourself. You know, the first one is being able to say, yes, I am going to have love. I am going to have this relationship because that desire is bubbling within me. And I am going to be honest with myself and say, yes, that's truly something I desire. And what's it going to take to get there? Really being in a space of choosing that. And then the second piece is, you know, really 
creating that vision of love that is so you, that is so aligned with you, that it's inevitable that it attracts your person, the kind of person that's like, that's who I've been praying for. And really let that sink in. Let that sink in because, you know, you may be here thinking, you know what, I'd really love to share my life with someone. And maybe you've been putting it off or maybe you're thinking, well, that's right now we're in a pandemic. Guess I can't have that. Making all of these excuses about it or, oh, I need to focus on work or, oh, you know, until my kids get older, like all of these things that we say that actually keep us from that, that actual desire that's been saying, pick me, pick me. That actually that desire is not just your desire. Listen, really hear this. The desire that's coming through you that says, I want to share my life with someone, that is not just for you. There is a second person in that, which is your beloved. And for you to actually ignore that means that you're actually kind of denying the other person their love story. So if you're not willing to choose it for you, would you be willing to choose it for someone else? And that sounds really weird. But the reason why I say that is because so many of us have grown up being in the habit of giving, 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 and it's harder to receive. I do want to invite you to choose to receive for sure. And are you willing to recognize that you receiving love is also gifting someone else their love story? And for me, it was super easy to be like, okay, I'm not giving up on this because this is truly not made up or coming, you know, from nowhere. This is something that I knew that I, I really wanted in my life. And knowing that it's also someone else's uh, dream, prayer, whatever you want to call it, um, is pretty phenomenal. And I will say that that was 100% confirmed when I met my partner, Larry. And when I met Larry, for us to be there and know that we were both, you know, really working on these similar, these similar commitments, these dating strategies, like all of these things that are nurturing that inner world that actually cultivates the ability to receive and allow love to come in. Because all five of these strategies are about really dissolving those barriers, dissolving the barriers, dissolving the limitations, just removing the lies. There are so many lies we're holding on to that actually stop us from love. It's crazy. And, and you don't have to continue that. That's why I know that, you know, when I'm working with clients, even when I do my happy and love strategy sessions, and if you haven't done one of those with me, and you're considering coaching, that is the first step is to reach out to me and we'll sit down and do a happy and love strategy session, which looks at, okay, what is in the way for you? And when you can see what's in the way for you, then we can see the next steps pretty easily. And then, you know, really it's about having the consistent plan and practice and support to change those old habits and create generate within you that space of confidence and safety and security that is what's required to receive and allow a love relationship into your life. And is it worth it? Absolutely. You deserve to be connected in that way. And I know so many people right now are feeling either how hard it is to be in the wrong relationship and just be like, okay, oops, like, this now I know staying at home with this person, really, I'm seeing the truth. Like I can't have this anymore. Or, you know, really being alone, 
for a really long time right now and how that can wake us up to something that maybe we've been distracted from. Like, oh, well, it was easy to stay busy when I could go out with my friends, go to yoga, do all the things and, you know, go shopping and being at restaurants or whatever that, you know, being single wasn't really like noticeable until now. So if you're noticing right now, then I would say, okay, what if we have a conversation? Clearly, you know, I will say that a happy and love strategy session in itself is just kind of the first step that reveals those specific things that, you know, maybe personally blocking you. The next level would be, okay, what is, what are the healing tools and strategies that are prescriptive for you? Because you know, you've had your own experience, whatever, you know, you learned about relationship from watching your parents or TV or media, like all of the things that kind of keep us in uh, a reality that doesn't support phenomenal relationships. And that's a very special, unique thing that is you know, only something you create with another person, you plus that person equals, you know, a really special, unique thing that's only created between you and your beloved. There's not just one relationship. This is not, you know, find someone, you know, move in, get married, whatever. Like, there's not like this rigid thing, even though that's sort of the Cinderella story has been, you know, indoctrinated into our life, <laughs> thinking that it's, this is how it happens. Well, there's a million, there's an infinite number of ways that relationship can show up and the infinite number of ways that you can co-create with someone and then infinite number of ways that you can really transform and heal but what I do know is that there are pretty much core relationship blocks that come up, you know, not feeling worthy, you know, living in, in fear, having pain from the past, you know, having some trauma from childhood or family stuff, like any of those things are the things that, and more, those kinds of things are things that can really truly kind of keep us from actually being able to receive a relationship. So I am excited. Tomorrow we'll talk about the next one. There's going to be five of these strategies. So today's about that phenomenal vision, getting to that place where you are really creating that experience of love that is so dialed in and aligned with you and aligned with the kind of person that is the right person for you. And that is one of the things that can propel you through, propel you forward, no matter what's happening in the world. And that is truly the magic that the um, best possible vision can be in your dating experience. Is it? It's that guiding light. It's that inspiration. It's that anticipation. It's that you know, truly knowing you're worthy of that. And you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of nurturing to get to that place. So reach out to me if you'd like to have a conversation um, about, you know, your specific experience and um, you can message me, you can comment below and we'll reach out and have a conversation. And I'm so glad you're here. Please share with me any ahas you've had in this. Share with me any questions you have. And I will be happy to answer it and perhaps create some future videos on that. So thanks for being here, everyone. We'll see you really soon. Bye.